Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So today I am off to the grocery store bright and early because uh, we're supposed to be getting some real, real hot weather over here and it's going to be some interesting storms later on. Speaking about storms, Monday night around, uh, let's see here, 5 p.m. or so, we had some uh, really bad storms come through here. Some warnings that there was a tornado sighting uh, out in uh, the Elgin area, I believe. And uh, yeah, we were out of power from 6.37 p.m. Monday night to, what was it? Uh, shit, I think it was like four or something in the afternoon on uh, Tuesday. And uh, yeah, it was pretty brutal. The hottest day starting yesterday uh, and no power, no air conditioning, you know, no refrigerator, no freezer, no nothing. So it was kind of sucked. You know, internet was down. Um, well, my internet was still working a little bit, but I didn't have any computers up and running to really do anything. Uh, I've got a battery backup on my modem, so the modem will continue to run for at least um what's it like two days or three days or something like that so the internet was pretty good up until the internet shut down and then that uh got shitty um and i mean like shutting down as far as just not working anymore not because of a power issue but because all well, the storms took that out too so that was interesting the sky turned friggin black over here and uh from what I understand from watching the news, we did have a lot of trees go down. Uh, after the storm, I kind of went out to see what was going on a little bit, uh, see if ComEd was out and about doing any repairs and getting things back up and running. Uh, that night on Monday, it was kind of warm out, but the humidity level was pretty high. So it was kind of sticky and, you know, opening up the windows really didn't help too much as far as trying to keep the keep cool. So come to find out, you know, ComEd had, I don't know how many customers that were down uh, just in this area alone. And uh, yeah, it was pretty brutal. So my area, the grid that is for the electricity grid that's over in my area here, since this is kind of like a newer area from the, the uh, well, my side of the street is from 78. The other side of the street is, I believe, like, early 70s, kind of 60s, is when those houses were built. Um, everything is underground. So all the electricity, that the wires and shit like that, everything's underground. People have a, like behind my fence, there's a transformer across the street. Uh, they got transformers in their backyard, uh, basically right on the property line. So it's not like in the middle of your yard or whatever. Now, the problem is, is on the other side of Streamwood over here is a lot older and they've got telephone poles with the electricity running on them and uh usually that feeds this area over here so if one of the breakers pops on one of the poles uh chances are we're going to be out of power so that kind of sucks so on that side of streamwood there was a lot of trees down over here wasn't too bad just a lot of leaves and branches and stuff but on that side of streamwood uh trees were like all over the streets and everything else people have like piles of brush in their yards uh from trying to clean up the street from the trees that fell over and broke and everything else so it was pretty rough pretty brutal so today is going to be another scorcher and today being uh wednesday so we're supposed to be getting storms again later on today that's going to be even more fun oh and another thing uh Monday night when those storms came through here, we have this uh, place called Pilot's Pete. It's a restaurant where it's a little airport and a restaurant in Schaumburg. So breaking tonight, Sky Fox surveyed the damage in Schaumburg caused by tonight's severe weather at the airport. A plane flipped onto its roof, another plane thrown by the wind over another plane and against a fence. In some areas, we had like 80 mile an hour winds. Some people will say more. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty rough. So tonight we're supposed to be kind of like getting the same thing. And uh, so I'll be watching that and hopefully the power won't go out again. So we're looking into a, what does they call it? Uh, Generex, generators. And, uh, you know, maybe not to have it power up the whole house, but at least a lot of the necessities like, you know, light, possible TV, 
refrigerator and air conditioner definitely. Uh, we just went and kind of like almost had to get rid of every goddamn thing that was inside our refrigerators. And we ended up going grocery shopping over uh, the weekend and uh, stocking up on everything. And that kind of screwed things up. So I had to run out yesterday, get all kinds of, and a lot of people didn't have ice because of the situation going on with no power. So I had to go into almost the next town over in order to get ice so I could put it in the freezer and the refrigerator, keep everything cool. So yeah, it was pretty interesting over here. And I know a few other people that live in the area uh, that are YouTubers as well, probably experienced maybe the same thing, which is not fun. So one of the things that I've got to do today, so I'm up and early, like I said, it's like six o'clock in the morning right now. I am going to be headed over to the grocery store because it's going to be hot outside and I need to pick up a few things that we had to throw away. So uh, tonight, more storms. So hopefully power doesn't go out again. That'll be interesting. So I got a couple of things that uh, I want to do and kind of want to show a little bit of one of the... Uh, one of the plans that I've got for going around the backyard uh, as soon as this weather breaks. I know the weekend is going to be a little bit cooler outside, so I want to take and uh, start this project and get it done and finished. And hopefully it lightens up the situation a little bit. Yeah, lighting up the situation. So I went out and I picked up uh, a 300-watt power pack, power supply, which is for LED or low voltage uh, lighting, landscaping lighting. And then I picked up, uh, it's a box of 12 of the low voltage landscaping lights. Now these are the 5000K daylight. So it's gonna be nice and bright. Um, I can't remember how many LEDs are inside these, uh, each one of these um, fixtures, but they're four watt floodlights. And this is a 12 pack. So I had to pick up some wire because none of this comes with anything. You have to buy it all separate. I've been noticing compared to the old Malibu kits that we used to get years ago, which I have in the front of the house, usually you can buy a kit and everything comes with it. But with LEDs and certain types of lighting that uh, you want to have to accent your backyard, front yard or whatever, uh, you're kind of better off and just buying everything separate because this way you can get exactly what you want and how you want it. It costs a lot more. And when I mean a lot more, it costs a lot more. Like this box here costs me uh, almost 200 bucks. And uh, like I said, this is 12 uh, LED, four watt floodlights. This power supply was like another 170 bucks. This is a 300 water. So it's gonna have enough power to power this set. And I can add to it later on, which I plan on doing. Now, the only bad thing is, is when you're doing something like this, you need to go with a um, higher gauge wire. So I've got 12 gauge, 50 foot wire here. I end up buying a uh, 16 gauge, 100 footer, which that's gotta go back to the store and I have to go and pick up the right shit. This is low voltage, so it's not gonna be like, uh, you know, if it rains or something like that, you're not going to have issues with, uh, say, like shorting out and shit like that. Um, but I am going to be using heat shrinking, soldering, heat shrinking, and electrical tape uh, to seal up any ends that are going to be like spliced into each other. This way, I know for a fact if I add more wire onto it, I'm not going to have any issues because it's going to be soldered. So that's what I got planned for the backyard when this weather breaks as far as the heat goes. So my area is not too bad. As you can see, there's just some leaves in the grass. Not really any major issues or anything like that. And then like on this side, same thing, not too bad. But when we get down the street, you'll see a lot more. So let's get it rolling over here. Back up. I want some tunes, damn it. All right, here we go. So this area didn't get hit too bad with the storm. It's not like major, major, major. But as we get down the street, like over here, yep, there it starts. 
you'll see a lot more of that as we get down the road. So it was pretty bad. The storm kind of came through here, not really fast, but uh, it took a little bit. I think it lasted you know, a little bit longer than an hour. So as you can see over here, there's more tree branches, more tree branches. But this is not bad for this side. More tree branches over here, more tree branches over here. This side's not bad. All right, when we'll we get to the other side, that's when you see split trees and broken trees and everything else. More, more tree debris. The funny thing is, is the Chicago Loop Bar and the. Um, music store over here they had power so I don't know if they got a generator or not but uh, and it was funny too because the right side of your screen had power the left side of the screen did not so this is where it gets more interesting when trees broken down as you can see here there's more more brush on the side stuff over here it was pretty brutal now these trees a lot of these trees are very old they were planted here when uh, the houses were built the village had a thing where uh, everybody had to have a tree on their easement and yeah, more debris over here we ended up plucking ours we pulled it out uh, the village came by and put a tree on our easement in front of our house uh, and it was like, uh, no, I don't think so. We're not going to have problems with our sewers or anything else. See, look at all this over here. And some of these trees just snapped. That they just planted like a year ago easement between the two lanes over here. A lot of the homeowners had people come out yesterday to clean up the mess and pick up a lot of the uh, debris. Usually it's a, a village thing, but some of these homeowners ended up doing a thing where they hired um, you know, private, private companies to come out and clean this mess up. Doesn't look too bad now, but man, it was bad yesterday. Now these houses on this side, uh, a lot of these were built, I believe, in the 40s and 60s. They were built uh, basically for the people that come home from the service. And, uh, you know, the people that were at war in the army and shit like that. They built these houses for. A lot of these houses are made with uh, two by two walls on the inside uh, with straps on them. They were kind of like a prefab home. They were ended up uh, building them on sites, putting them together like all this over here. Man, now this right here is kind of cool. Have you ever seen a tree split in half? Check this shit out. Unfucking real. But this was a lot worse the other day. This is, it's gotten pretty much cleaned up. All it is now is just a lot of leaves, small branches. Um, some people, like I said, still have a lot of, a lot of shit in their yard. 
the village will be, what was it? Uh, we are zone, I think I'm zone two. So by my house, the village ain't coming out. The next time the village will come out will be uh, July 2nd, I think, because I'm zone two to pick up all of the branches and shit like that. But the trees in my backyard were kind of swaying in the wind pretty damn good. So you got more debris over there. More debris over here. More over here. So yeah, this storm was pretty good. I mean, I, I like a good storm. Actually, I love a good storm. But uh, I don't like it when the power goes out for that length of a time. I don't mind if it's like a couple hours or so. But the sky turning black, that was interesting. The last time we had something that, that said something about a tornado running through here, um, the sky turned like a weird green color. And I was in grade school at the time. So yeah, this time the sky turned black. And as we were watching, I should have got the camera out and started videotaping as the, uh, the sky was turning black. And then as it passed, it ended up doing a thing where uh, you could see like shit hanging off the bottom of the clouds and it kind of looked like it was uh, kind of looked like it was like uh, uh, like tails like something was going to happen so I'm coming up towards the grocery store now and uh, yeah got a little list of all the shit that I had to replace that Possibly went bad in the refrigerators. We were like out of power for like 18 hours. So I am going to go hit the Jurasco and uh, yeah, hopefully do some guitar work today. Look at this fucker. Goddamn seagull. There's no sea around here. These motherfuckers are all over the parking lot, especially like Walmarts and shit like that. They're scavengers. They eat anything and anything they could find. They don't care what the fuck it is. This motherfucker was picking at a piece of paper and tossing it around. Nasty little motherfuckers. See, this is why I like to come to the grocery store early in the morning. They open at 6. It is right now about 6.38. And we're pushing. We're at 80 degrees right now. It's 6 in the morning. Shit. It's going to be a warm one. But this is why I like, you know, coming here. There's nobody here. The stock is already up and uh, yeah, go in there and just pick what you want and go home. So on the way back to the car, I walked past a, I didn't have my phone with me. I walked past a vehicle and the woman got into her vehicle. On her license plate, it says DBL DS. What do you think that means? 